Welcome to Car Crazed Fool. Here we are with the legendary LaRousse Tour de France 911. Here we are with two legendary men, Kevin from Historica and sure. Gerard Lewis. How are you? Um, so here we have this famous car. This is the man that was once behind the wheel. Uh, I thought we'd take a walk around um, and look at various parts. So, how was it driving the car today? Exactly as it was in uh, 1970. Exactly, I found the car as well as before. Very easy car to drive, very performant, good handling, yeah. good engine. Oh, it was, a, it was a pleasure for me to, to drive again. It was amazing to hear the sound of the car is just uh, incredible. Um, it's such an amazing, uh, and the noise um, is very, very uh, distinct. So, Kevin, how did you manage to find such a significant car? Well, quite some years ago, um, pre-internet, um, I heard rumours that there was a, a 911R uh, rallying in Ireland, and I thought I'd track the car down and when I got to where it was living it, the car had gone it was already sold mm -hmm. and at that point the uh, the trail dried up and I didn't think any more of it until probably some 10 years later I picked up a Porsche magazine and there was an article about a special um, race car that a lady owned and she thought that it was um, a car of significant history um, and looking at the photos I could see that it had a competition RSR engine in the back and it had special um, interior parts uh, that looked like it was a factory car so I immediately went and saw her and uh, I managed to buy the car from her. Fantastic, and so did you at, at the time when you were looking and, and to sort of discover this car in Ireland did you suspect it was the Tour de France? The, 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 the rumours were that the car was, was in Ireland and so I I had high possibility or hopes that it was the car. I mean, it wasn't until we got the car home and started to inspect the car that we saw the telltale signs that this particular car had certain things that were only were one off to this car. Um, it had been modified to um, three litre bodywork as most of the cars uh, moved on through the racing period. Yeah. But um, it's got special um, strengthening to the jacks was only done on this car and the, the, the bonnet is is one off on this car that they didn't do to any other car and also the, uh, the battery pull-off switch was down here by the headlight which again um, I've not seen on any of the other 911s. Yeah. So all these are telltale things and when we took the paint back on the wings we found yellow and red. You must, that must have been a, uh, quite a revelation. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, when you actually looked to buy it though, you, you went into it knowing, uh, do you think it was just a 911R or do you think it was a... I, I, I thought that it probably was the, the Louis to the France car, yeah. um, but I couldn't be, be certain. Yeah. And it was only um, once we spoke to the archives that we were able to confirm from the production number in the car that it was the car. So, so actually, that, that's a good question. So the, the, the process of... Um, proving the provenance of the car. Was that a difficult thing to go through? Yes, because um, the, the, the actually for many, many years the main Porsche book, the more Porsche Bible, the Porsche mm. book written by Jürgen Barth had um, the wrong chassis number down for the Tour de France car. So how did that happen? Was it just There was another car in 71 which uh, Mesnery um, raced with Gerard mm -hmm. and the files for this car were missing for many years. When I initially spoke to Porsche Archive, yeah. the history, they couldn't find it. It was only some five years after I bought the car that they managed to find the, the records for the car. And the good news is that every piece of paper they still have and every single piece of paper has the chassis number of the car on <laughs> <laughs> the 
this fuel tank is the, 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 the original tank that was in the car yeah. from the day. So is this, is this true? Is this the same tank? Can you remember it? Yes, but uh, <laughs> I think Kevin should explain to you that this is a very special part of the Yeah, there was the some, some things that were only done one. to this car. Only one yes. car with, uh, with uh, this. Yes. Normally, it's, a, it's, a it's, a, it's an angle and a, a straight an corner. Yes. Straight forward. Yeah. This is Rounded. So, so why did they do that? Is that? Well, it was because everything that they could, they put into plastic. So the front arches and wings are fully plastic. Yep. The, the, the bonnet is fully plastic. The doors, the, the rear wings, and and the hood. And of course, it's it's a, a factory works car, so the, the body was lightweight yes. initially. Yes. Um, and there's some fantastic stories um, about the weight saving. Um, I hear you're obsessed with the weight saving. Yes, yes. it's very important. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that already. And I asked the people of uh, Porsche and especially Jorgen Bart, you know, to to go up under 800 kilos. Okay, that's a I said, very okay, light car. I give you champagne, a bottle of champagne, <laughs> as you like. <laughs> Go under 800 kilos, and they went to 700. Seven, 748 in the end. But they, uh, Jürgen no. told me that um, two weeks before the event, Gerard went to the factory and they weighed <laughs> the car, and it was it was 800 kilos, and yeah. they they got rid of nearly 50 kilos from in the last yes. two weeks. Did this cost you a lot of champagne? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And so, and what other what other unique features are there? Um, well, specific, it's, specific to this car? It's completely stripped out. Yeah. The 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 Recaro and the shield are very very lightweight. Yes. Um, there's no interior in, in in the car at all. Should I open the door um, and have a look? Uh, you can the, feel the weight of the door. Actually. The only change is that we've had to do for because we wish to use the car in in modern racing is we've had now to put a full cage in the car. And it has a modern fire system. So it's under current FIA rigs, yeah. And what's the engine it's running at the moment? The engine uh, is 2.5 twin plug. And and what stage in it's obviously being a race car, these things evolve over time. Um, this this is very much as the engine would have ran in in the 70. Yeah. With a 2.5 on 46 Webers, twin plug, um, and would be producing around 260 brake. Amazing sound. Yeah. Beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. Inside you cannot feel if it is a 2.5 or a <laughs> <laughs> I drove all, all engines you know, yes. from 2 litres to 3 litres. Yeah. I drove every, every engine. So, But this one is going very well. And do you have uh, very fond memories of this car from the race itself? Yes. Well, as, I said, <laughs> as I said, always the race yeah. was perfect. So no special uh, events <laughs> on the race. They really did go to uh, every end. I mean, it's 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 very much got our principle to the yeah. to the car. So they've got our hinges, our doors, yeah. all of the. Um, apart from yeah. the windscreen, yeah. everything is boxy glass. Right. Um, they drilled. They drilled the door hinges. They drilled the foot plates. They drilled everything they could, and and they've used a lot of aluminium on the on the bolting of the non-stressed parts. Yeah. So am I right in thinking that um, I, I heard you discussing earlier that this actually has the same power-to-weight ratio as the new 911R? Which is quite staggering, really. Yeah, you know, amazing. Been 46 years. <laughs> Would you like to race it again? You must go very far because. <laughs> I'm getting older every year. Ah, uh, I saw you drive earlier. <laughs> well, no, thank you very much um, for your time today. Thank you very much for the passenger ride. I thoroughly enjoyed that.